Whether or not we have the desire to overcome barriers, that depends on this molecule we call dopamine. It's a fascinating molecule and it lies at the center of so many great things in life and it lies at the center of so many terrible aspects of life, namely addiction and certain forms of mental disease. Huberman teaches us about the power of dopamine, a brain chemical that affects how we feel. By understanding how it works, we can control our happiness and make better choices in life. This exciting video shows us how to take charge of our dopamine and improve our lives. The journey is just the beginning, and we can't wait to see where it takes us. The way that you're conceptualizing your goals can actually predict whether or not you're going to continue to pursue those goals, and therefore whether or not you will succeed in achieving those goals, as well as whether or not you will quit. There's a fundamental relationship between dopamine released in your brain and your desire to exert effort. And you can actually control the schedule of dopamine release, but it requires the appropriate knowledge. This is one of those cases where understanding the way the dopamine system works will allow you to leverage it to your benefit. And if you don't understand the way the dopamine works, there's a good chance that it's going to pull you out into the current of life, meaning the rest of the world is going to control your dopamine schedules. If suddenly you get excited about something, you anticipate something, not receive an award, but you get excited in an anticipatory way, then the rate of firing, the rate of activity in this reward pathway suddenly increases to like 30 or 40 times. And it has the effect of creating a sense of action or desire to move in the direction of the thing that you're craving. In fact, it's fair to say that dopamine is responsible for wanting and for craving. And that's distinctly different from the way that you hear it talked about normally, which is that it's involved in pleasure. So yes, motivation is a two-part process, which is about balancing pleasure and pain. Most people think about motivation and reward and dopamine is just trying to achieve pleasure. And indeed, dopamine is released in the brain from the VTA at the nucleus accumbens when we experience things that we like. So here's the way to conceptualize this. And if you can internalize this in your mind, it will really help you as you move through your day, trying to understand why you might be motivated or not motivated for certain things. So when you're just sitting around, not doing much of anything, maybe you wake up in bed in the morning, you're thinking about getting up or not, this reward pathway is releasing dopamine at a rate of about three or four times per second. It's kind of firing at a low level. When I say firing, I mean electrical activity in the neurons. So when you're just around, you feel okay, not depressed, not highly motivated, not excited, maybe three or four times a second. If suddenly you get excited about something, you anticipate something, not receive an award, but you get excited in an anticipatory way, then the rate of firing, the rate of activity in this reward pathway suddenly increases to like 30 or 40 times. And it has the effect of creating a sense of action or desire to move in the direction of the thing that you're craving. In fact, it's fair to say that dopamine is responsible for wanting and for craving. And that's distinctly different from the way that you hear it talked about normally, which is that it's involved in pleasure. So yes, dopamine is released in response to sex. It's released in response to food. It's released in response to a lot of things but it's mostly released in anticipation and craving for a particular thing. It has the effect of narrowing our focus for the thing that we crave. And that thing could be as simple as a cup of coffee. It could be as um, important as a big board meeting. It could be a big final exam. It could be uh, the person that we're excited to meet or see. Dopamine doesn't care about what you're craving. It just releases at a particular rate. In fact, if we just take a step back and we look at the scientific data on how much the dopamine firing increases in response to different things, you get a pretty interesting window into how your brain works and why you might be motivated or not motivated. Let's say you're hungry or you're looking forward to a cup of coffee or you're going to see your partner. Well, your dopamine neurons are firing at a low rate until you start thinking about the thing that you want or the thing that you're looking forward to. Let's say you're craving chocolate or a good meal steak if you like steak or a nice plate of pasta if you like pasta when you eat that food the amount of dopamine that's released in this reward pathway goes up about 50 percent above baseline the neurons there go from firing you know three or four times per second to you know six or ten times per second it really depends and these aren't exact numbers but if we were to measure the amount of dopamine that's released it goes up about 50 percent 
Nicotine does that, and it's kind of interesting that nicotine would increase the amount of dopamine in your brain very quickly, within seconds. That's 150 times over baseline, as opposed to sex, which is 100% above, or food, which is 50%. Cocaine and amphetamine increase the amount of dopamine that's released a thousandfold within about 10 seconds of consuming the drug. However, just thinking about food, about sex, about nicotine, if you like nicotine, or cocaine or amphetamine, can increase the amount of dopamine that's released to the same degree as actually consuming the drug. Intermittent reinforcement is the most powerful form of dopamine reward schedule to keep you doing something. So we can export that. We can use it for good. If there's something that you're pursuing in life, whether or not it's an academic goal or a financial goal or a relationship goal, one of the things that you can do to ensure that you will remain on the path to that goal for a very long time and that you will continue to exceed your previous performance, as well as continue to enjoy the dopamine release that occurs when you hit the milestones that you want to achieve, is to occasionally remove rewards subjectively. As you reach each one of those goals, you should know now that the amount of dopamine is not going to peak. It's actually going to diminish and make you crave more. The key to avoiding that crash, but to still keep it in healthy levels that will allow you to continue your pursuit, is as you are staircasing toward your goal, maybe that's dollars, maybe that's followers, maybe that's grades, maybe that's some other metric, it's medals or trophies, you actually want to blunt the reward response for some of those intermediate goals. Now, I'm not telling you shouldn't celebrate your wins, but I'm telling you not to celebrate all of them. Or as a good friend of mine who recently, fortunately for him, had a great financial success, he asked me and somebody else, a good friend of mine who's very tuned into dopamine reward schedules, understands how they work at a really deep level. And he said, I don't know what to do next. And we said, oh, well, that's simple. You should just give most of it away. And this wasn't a ploy to receive any of the money ourselves. This was really about reducing the impact of that reward. Now, hopefully giving him money away, if you already have enough of it, would be something that was rewarding in and of itself. But if you're a student who's pursuing goals in university, or you're an athlete who's pursuing goals, it actually makes sense from a rational perspective, once you understand these mechanisms, to hit a new high point of performance, or to get that A plus, or for you, if it's an A minus, et cetera, and to tell yourself, okay, that was good, but to actually actively blunt the reward, to not go and celebrate too intensely. Because in doing that, you keep your dopamine system in check and you ensure that you're going to stay on the path of continued pursuit, not just for that thing, but for all things. Big increases in dopamine lead to big crashes in dopamine and big increases in dopamine up the ante. They increase the extent to which you are willing to invest time and energy in order to achieve goals and rewards that may be out of your reach. You never really know if you're going to succeed. So to make this crystal clear, celebrate your wins, but don't celebrate every win. That's one way that you can ensure that you're going to continue down the path of progress. And I think most of the learning tools that are in schools are about reward, hopefully for, for genuine performance. They are about encouraging us. We do have to believe that we can perform well. One of the hallmarks of growth mindset is the internalization that we're not getting it right yet. The word yet is very important. And also the sense that we reward our good behavior, our, our good performance, but not every time. One way to do this is to actually take the reward and reinforcement out of your own hands and your own mind. And you tell somebody that they are in control of whether or not you're allowed to feel good about your wins. Now, this is, I realize is very unnatural for most people, but if you're somebody who's simply going to be in pursuit and you're going to really register your wins and you think that that's going to actually make you a better performer, it will in the short term, but not in the long term. You reward yourself not on a predictable schedule. So not every other time or every third time or every 10th time, but sometimes it's three in a row, then not at all for 10 days. So reward is important. Self-reward is critically important, but make sure that you're not doing it on such a predictable schedule that you burn out these dopamine circuits or that you undercut your own ability to strive and achieve. When something really good happens, I actually hesitate as to whether or not I want to internalize that and celebrate 
whether or not I want to tell anybody, which is its own form of celebration because then you're getting positive feedback. And so I am very cautious with how I deploy dopamine release in response to wins. It's certainly not the only way that I've navigated my career. There are a number of other principles I incorporate, but intermittent reward for wins, for achievements, is a very powerful way to ensure that you will stay on the path of pursuit.